Can't get it up. Coming too quickly. Get walked over by their partner. There's no sexual polarity. Guy hooked up with his girl. He hooked up with mine. He made her squirt. And I'm like, dude, show me how you did that. I've got chlamydia four fucking times. Caught herpes. If I had a dollar for all the times I've heard from women, I just wish a guy would tell me to shut the fuck up. I'd be rich. Have my cheek on her pussy. She's like, so what do you guys think tonight? Like threesome? Robbie is one of the nicest guys I've ever met, but he has a backbone. That's the difference. Welcome to the Inner Confidence Podcast, where we bring you men's dating and lifestyle advice that doesn't suck. I'm your host, Robbie Kramer, a former collegiate golfer turned poker pro turned finance guy who became obsessed with learning about male-female attraction and dynamics and passionate about teaching men how to improve and optimize their love life. Tune in each week and we'll bring you the latest and greatest strategies on how to get more dates, how to build a thriving social circle that brings the best men and women into your life, how to become a better networker, and how to design a lifestyle that makes all your Buddy's jealous. If you're new to the show, I recommend you download my first date protocol. It's the best piece of content I have. It'll help you optimize your first date and subsequent dates. And I like to connect with my listeners personally. So if you want to grab a copy of that, please send me a direct message on Instagram. I'm at Robbie underscore Kramer. Now let's dive into this week's content. Yo, guys, we are back. And today we have an amazing returning guest. And we've got a very cool episode in store for you guys. We're going to talk about sexual dysfunction, how to be the best she's ever had, even dive into some crazy shit like how to tell your partner or your potential partner if you have an STD or herpes, how to last longer, how to deal with like sexual dysfunction, getting it up, not being able to, you know, last long enough in bed. Um, we've got an amazing expert here. He's been on the podcast before, and that's Andrew Miyak. Andrew, thanks so much for for being here, man. I'm, it's it's always an honor to talk to you. Appreciate it, man. It's always good to be back. Yeah, Andrew, and that's Andrew Andrew Miyak. Did I pronounce it right? Miyak Miyak. Yeah, Miyak. That's correct. Yeah, Miyok, you said it. Yeah. You you have a lot of. I can imagine some of the last names you'd have to pronounce in Ukraine, man. So <laughs> it, it's yeah, it, it it's the the stress of where you put the uh, the pronunciation on the vowels. You know, it's like Andrew Miok or Andrew Miok, right? It's so <laughs> <laughs> completely. Now that I'm back in America, I really have no excuse. But <laughs> anyways, dude, I, I'm really excited for this conversation. We had a great conversation last week where you were interviewing me, so. I'm excited to to dig in here. Um, you know, for the guys who don't know you, can you just tell us your story? How'd you get into this uh, crazy world of, uh, you know, becoming an, an expert on sex and dominance and, and yeah, becoming the guy you are? Yeah. Again, great to be here. And in short, my story is this. I got told all shit in bed to running sex parties to helping thousands of guys. That's basically in short. And it's been a fucking wild journey, an absolutely wild ride. I never thought I would be in this position sitting here now talking about this. And I, I, when I first like thought I was learning about sex, I thought it was freaking weird. Like, why am I going to learn about how to be good in bed? Because I already thought I was good in bed. And hence, that's why I will jump into the story of when I got into this, I was like in the world of like dating, like, doing all that stuff. I thought I was okay at meeting women because that was never my obsession. Like being in the world of pickup back in the day, doing that. But I'm like, this just isn't me. But I like, I wanted the skills to meet women. So I want to really like learn how to get women to the bedroom so that I can explore. Like I saw it started for me when a woman got to the bedroom. That's the difference where Dating coaches, I'll teach you how to get a woman to the bedroom and their like journeys, like how to like obsess over that. My obsession was like, once a woman's in the bedroom, how can I blow her mind? So my story in short, I don't know how much you want to go into it, but I just never forget the day. I was cocky, brash. I thought I was the man, ex-drug dealer. Like the reason I'm saying the drug dealer part is because I ended up getting caught and didn't go to jail I got a hundred hours of community service. I was hanging out like club promoting. I was a fucking bad dude. I was a piece of shit in a lot of ways. Like I had no integrity going to nightclubs. Like I'd have three monogamous girlfriends. Doesn't even make sense. I was fucking a married woman. I was a piece of shit too for a long time. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, and her best friend going to the night. I never forget this, Robbie. Like I was at a club with one of my monogamous girlfriends. 
I waited for her to go to the toilet. So she's like, I need to go to the toilet. She's like, all right, I'll, I'll be here and wait. She went to the toilet and I fucking ran to the bar. We were already like kind of in the, in the, on the dance floor. I ran to the bar and then just like walked up to these two women who I just saw, went there quickly, started making out with the woman. So I'm cheating on my, one of my monogamous girlfriends while she's in the toilet for a minute. She comes back, fucking whacks me across the face. I was like, what did I do wrong? You know, in my head, like, of course I can do this, you know? And then we went back to the hotel and I'm walking down the street. She's whacking me all the way home. What the fuck's wrong with you? I deserved it. But that was the chaos I was in, man. Bikers, drug dealers, fucking so, club promoters, all the crazy shit, dude. Let, let me back up a second. So when you yeah. got into, you know, pickup, I guess, in the beginning, yeah. were you like a recovering, you know, nice guy, romantic, and then you became kind of like this bad boy? I, I was like, I was just, man, I had a lot of insecurities and a lot of validation. That's where I came from. I'm like, I want to learn the skill of meeting women and having sex. I actually lost my virginity when I was 17 years old. I was like, if I'm 18 and, a, and still a virgin, this is where my headspace was back then. I'm a fucking loser. I don't right. want to be a loser. So I ended up losing my virginity at uh, 17 and a half years old. I'm like, thank God I'm not 18 and a virgin. And then I lost my virginity. I was so bad in bed. Like, fuck. Like, <laughs> this so woman, you could get girls, but you you were you felt like you were shit in bed when you started. Oh uh, yeah. I was okay at meeting women, but then I just like learned, like I was okay at naturally meeting women, but then I learned, like I read the book game as you did. And then my actually, I got worse because I felt like I knew nothing and I had to learn all these skills and techniques, which is valid, like understanding the right skills and techniques, but there's a lot of stuff I wasn't doing into the right principles. I ended up doing some dating company and it was actually, a lot of it was quite terrible advice. It was just kind of like a lot of vibe where I'm like, I actually need some hard skills and techniques to actually learn, but I just learned the vibe. So then when I did that, I was like, oh, fuck, I feel more confused. So that was right. more of the journey. So guys who are listening to this now, you've got Robbie and there's so many, there's actually a few quite really good dating coaches out there. A lot of them are shit, but there are really great guys who've really nailed this as the art of what it is. But for me, like I lost my virginity and I just got told I was like, like I was shit, man. I, was, I think I lasted a minute. I was like, I was like, well, I got a condom. It was a like glow in the dark and I put that on and I lasted like a minute. But here's the crazy part. <laughs> when I had sex with this woman, I lasted like two, three minutes. And then I got obsessed with the glow in the dark condom. The next day, she goes to a movie. She goes to the movie. She works at the movies. And when she's there, my brother, we look like twins, me and my brother, even though we're not. He walked up the stairs holding another woman's hands. So she's thinking, I just slept with this guy the night before. And then he comes to the movie with a new woman. So she, she thought it was actually me, but it was actually my brother. And then she cracked it and all this shit. So it was crazy. And here's the thing. You know, one of, one of my first mentors who got me into all this is Shay Matthews. You know that from Natural Lifestyles. Yeah, yeah. And the first woman I ever slept with, her name was Shay. So I'm like, what a fucking crazy, like, I'm like, it must have been written in the stars. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's too coincidental, right? Where you're like, yeah. was that a glitch in the matrix sort of thing? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting how you kind of approached it because I, I see this a lot with the guys I work with where, you know, I'll, I'll basically teach a guy to kind of, you know, start having some abundance, you know, get him on a bunch of dates, help him optimize the yeah. dates. But a lot of the time those guys will self-sabotage because they've got all this anxiety around the bedroom stuff. And, yeah. you know, I'll be like, why, like, dude, why are you basically fumbling on the like five or one yard line all the time? And then I find out they're like, well, actually I'm like really insecure about like, I'm not lasting long enough or, you know, I, I, I just, it, you know, bedroom insecurities. And that bleeds all the way through to just like the first impression saying hi, right. If you know that you're shit in bed and you're anxious about that, like why bother doing anything else? So yeah. Is, is that oh, kind of sure. right? Is that how you felt when you were? It's it's like this. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? If we go to that analogy, I see how many men, okay, I want to focus on my dating life first, but then they, they know they can't get it up. They're going to be shit in bed. They don't know what techniques to do. And they're just feeling so insecure about that. So what they'll do is like, they'll actually self-sabotage their own dating life. Totally. And then they won't actually have the sex they've wanted because they go, well, they weren't 
talk to the women they really want to, or they'll talk to women below their standard just because they will be like, well, there's no point talking to the women I really want because then when I get to the bedroom, I'm going to disappoint her. And like, how can I give you an overview, just a really high level overview? I've got chlamydia four fucking times. I caught herpes, which you can't get, about 30% of people actually have herpes. Then also just like cheating on women, lying, like multiple relationships. Like it's just like open relationships, closed relationships, like living in little hippie communes with women and like just, just fucking crazy shit, man. Like just, just stuff where just, it just formed who I was as this, this man with sexuality. And the biggest thing, one of the, everyone's like, what's the one thing? There's so many things that led me on this journey of sexuality. But one of the main things was when a woman told me I was shit in bed because I was a selfish lover and I was trying to be the man. I had, I had, a, I had pretty good, I was okay at meeting women. Like I've, ne- I've never been like phenomenal. I've always usually met a lot of women through social circles or like I've been pretty good at like going out and meeting people at like certain events and stuff like that. But I had enough skills with women that I could meet the women I wanted to. So then I could develop and learn all about the sex. But when I met this woman, when I was doing the community service, we had sex and I've never shared this publicly because this will sound like a brag and sounds like I'm just some fucking douchebag, but I don't care. I'm enough. I'm, I'm sick and tired of just holding this back. So you kind of know in Australian culture, like you kind of know where you are on the size spectrum when you're like hanging out in a football club with your mates and stuff like that's different to American football. It's Australian football. And then you kind of, and then at school, you kind of know where you are on the um, scale. The reason I'm saying this is really fucking clear because I hate when guys say, oh, it, you're only a sex coach because of this. So I realized that I was a little bit bigger than average than most guys. I'm like, cool, I'm on the biggest spectrum. But the thing is, when I first started this, this woman, she goes, yeah, you're a bit bigger, but you still shit in bed. So it didn't actually fucking matter how big I was. I've had, I've, I haven't had, the, I've never said this fucking publicly ever because I didn't want to sound like that dickhead going, I'm using this as status to go get women. I'm not at all. I got fucking told that I was shit even if I was like on the biggest side. So when guys go, oh, it's all about the fucking size. I'm like, well, if you fucking one or one inch, I get that completely. But most guys are it's they watch too much porn and they see this guy with this huge 10 inch fucking thing and they and they go they compare to that instead of going hang on a second i got told all shit even though of what the circumstances i had it's like it's completely irrelevant that's like i gotta figure this shit out and that's why i met shay all those years later and then that took me on a journey in depth about this stuff i'm like okay it's so much more than size even though that's important to a degree but it's not the be all and end all. And for myself, when I went and explored this, I learned so much about emotional connection, sexual connection with the woman, how to really I open up, how she can open up. And then I went on this obsessive journey. I lived in a house in Melbourne, in Brunswick. We called it the Barclay Brothel because it was on Barclay Street. For one year, me and two other buddies, we lived there. And it was just like a bit of a revolving door. And we learned so much about like, women from that perspective of like they would be like oh you're the best year i ever had you're the best i've had like, it just got like that's the reason the book i'm going to send you a copy soon robbie like the best you ever had like we got that so fucking many times when we would say that or you're amazing you know what you're doing i've never had an orgasm like that it would be like clockwork and we'd, we'd hear patterns and we'd repeat this and we used to run sex parties from this place and we'd hear the same thing and uh it's just like okay there's a pattern to this there's a method to the madness about how to be a phenomenal lover and how to have women consistently have those responses. So we kind of gamified the whole process. When I say gamified, I actually just understood the building blocks of what it is to be that, that character of that man who can give a woman those experiences consistently. And hence, when guys go, oh, can I be good and better? I'm like, it's easy. Like I've taken guys who are virgins to threesomes, et cetera, like that, or guys who are like in similar positions to married. It doesn't really matter. And that's, it's just a fucking crazy world if you allow yourself to learn this process if you want to. And there's so many men who feel fucked up and broken in their living lives of suffering and quiet desperation where it's like you don't need to. And it's yeah. actually the easy part is actually there's two stages to it. 
being the best you ever had, stage one, like learning all the techniques and that, that's actually really quite simple. Stage two is how to become that powerful masculine leader inside and outside the bedroom. Then when you get better at this, your techniques will get better because the more safe and comfortable and non-judged a woman can feel inside the bedroom and she just feels like she can say anything. And if I give you the tagline of the company, the mission, it'll make sense. It'll be like to elevate the sexual well-being of humanity so men can have mind-blowing intimate experiences with women they care about by opening their hearts and connecting deeply with themselves. As a result, becoming powerful masculine leaders inside and outside the bedroom. Now, how do we do that? We do that through the SQL method, which is helping men embody their soft, their silly, and their savage. And I can I like dive that. into that more <laughs> in a second. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, I saw that on some of your videos. You're talking about that because... You know, guys get very hung up on this whole idea of like being alpha and being dominant and like being masculine. And a lot of the time they get so caught up in that they, they, they lose the playful, the silly, the fun, the fun loving, um, because they're, they're traumatized from being nice guys for so long that they swing yeah. to the other end of the spectrum. And then right now they're just this kind of like inauthentic, fake, dominant Dude, right? Yeah. And it's part of the journey, of course. But I love that you bake that in ahead of time so guys can think about that. Like, no, you 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 you, you know, if you're gonna be these things, you can't you can't just throw the the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, but most guys don't even know what dominance is. That's the thing. They're confusing dominance with domineering. And when we have a confusion of a word about like how to be dominant in the bedroom with a woman, then guys just go, Oh fuck. So my if I look at it as a high level overview. Dominance is this. Dominance is leadership. Leadership is service. Service is love. So dominance is, is actually love. I care about this woman and I'm going to serve her. And irony is when you serve her so freaking well, she will want to do anything for you. And you get to a point where women are like, I'm yours. Do whatever you want to me. I don't care. Because in the, I in trust the BDSM you so community. Much. From what I've heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, like in the BDSM yeah. community, they say that the submissive is really the one who has all the power, and 100%. you're the one you're serving the submissive, right? And if this, and if the submissive feels 100 percent taken care of, and you know, and she feels like the dominant one is in control, then she can truly submit, right? So it's like. 100%. It's it's not this idea of dominating her; it's the idea of serving her essentially yeah. is what i'm hearing you're saying yeah it's not being domineering basically dominance is this dominance is we both win domineering is i win you lose so that's the difference as well like if you look at persuasion like it's the same thing where i am persuading her and i'm connecting deeply with her and persuasion is like i'm doing everything in my power so then we can have this connection. So then we can do certain things in the bedroom because I know it's going to be in benefit of you and who you are as a woman and our connection. Manipulation is purely domineering and I'm doing all of this purely for my benefit and you lose, which is essentially fucking like, we're talking about the R word, RA, you know, the rest, depending what platform. Mm -hmm. It's just... Men are trying, if you're just doing this purely for your own vanity and your own, yeah, your own delusional perspective to fucking cause harm to other women, like you got other problems and I do not condone that whatsoever. And completely what you said, Robbie, dominance is the deepest care and the person who's actually in control is her. And right. this is what I'm, when I'm with a woman and the current woman I'm with, I'm talking about it's her needs come first to make sure they're met. Then it's my wants. Then that's it. Her so needs when you started, number one. When you started, you got that feedback that you were shit in bed and that's because yeah. you were putting your needs first. You were being selfish. You were, what did that look like? Um, it's, if a great, you paint it's a, a picture. great question. It's a great question because there's two aspects. There's the king and then there's the, prince or you can say the boy and the man 
And when you're just the prince, just trying to put your needs first to go, oh, I'm going to be the man. I'm going to try and do this for validation. I'm going to do this to be fucking great in bed. And I'm going to do this to prove to her, you lose. But if you're doing it from a kingly point, like a real true masculine leader, you want to, if you don't like the word king, because that word gets thrown around so much, like a masculine leader, you're like, I'm doing this to fill my own cup. And when a woman can truly feel that you fill your own cup sexually, and you're going, this is what I want to do. And you're coming from a place of the nice guy with boundaries. That's what I like to call. She can feel the difference in that. Like I'm doing this because this turns me on, but I also want to know what turns you the fuck on because truly to be, the best you ever had inside the bedroom, you have to be the best you've ever had. It's the same with personal development. It starts with you. It starts here. And a lot of men go, I'll be great for her. That only lasts to a certain amount. But when she can really feel that you let go and you're there and you're not trying to hold back your sexual expression, she's like, oh my God. And the biggest thing you can give a woman is your presence, your care, and the depth of the man who you are. And when she can feel that, holy fucking moly, that is like more of a kingly, like a manly thing. But then like the boy's like, how can I take just from this interaction? And that's it. And it's all about you. So it's, it's a very fine line. But then when that fine line is danced very well, a woman like, wow, he's coming in there and he really wants to do X, Y, and Z in the bedroom. And then when he can do that, everything has the baseline of care. And I've got your back but then he cares so deeply about himself and his sexual expression. And then when you do that, she will feel how comfortable you are with your sexual expression. And that will be a mirror for her to be comfortable and more open about that as well. Now, so if a guy's listening and, you know, and and you touched on this earlier based on the fact that like you were trying to improve at this stuff, but you were kind of like in three monogamous relationships at the same time, right? So you were, you know, leading girls on (laughs) or cheating or doing that. Um, you know, if you're trying to become the best she's ever had, um, I think it's important to kind of first have a a pretty good idea of like, does that goal fit into what you're currently doing, right? So how did you how did you kind of rectify the path that you know you're kind of like this asshole player, um, improving your sex skills, but like at some point you had to kind of stop the way you're operating from like an inner game perspective or just from a also from a tactical perspective. Like how did you make that shift and and what did you tell yourself to what did you do to like to kill that dissonance in your brain i guess well there's there's only two reasons we change isn't it because of pain moving towards or moving away from yeah so right i'm like i never want to go through that again dude i got i got to a point there's a few there's a few points on my journey and i just got sick and tired of cheating like i cheated on quite a few women I'm not, this isn't like, oh, do I have to cheat on women? I realized I could have everything I wanted without cheating section. I'm like, oh, hang on a second. No, I can only have this lifestyle if I cheat. But realistically, I didn't have to do that. And I was like, just so much pain, man. Like how many more painful experiences do I have to have? Like of women, like going, you're a piece of shit, losing friends, losing certain communities, people going, you're Like, I don't want to, I don't want to associate with a man like you. And I'm like, and I can see where they're coming from because I was just in for my own needs. And like, it was only like really two years ago now, man, that I go enough's enough. Like, that's why the transition of SQL has been like, cool. I can learn, I can be an amazing lover in the bedroom and like be fucking great, whatever. But that's only one aspect of it. But then I'm like, I want to really develop the character and the man who I am. Man, I had two ex-girlfriends. They, they shot a podcast on me, basically going, Andrew, you're a piece of shit. But and I and I can and I can see their perspective because I was of like cheating on them, then they connected on how I cheated on them both. And I'm like, I don't want to be that man. So hence I was like 180 fucking pounds or 175 pounds or some shit. And I was skinny and I was like, all that stuff. I'm like, I don't want to be this man anymore. I just don't want to do that. So basically I got a haircut and everything changed. No, like I just, I just want to change everything, mate. I just want to go, I want to be that man of integrity where I can look in the mirror and go, it's not all about just being great in the bedroom. It's not all about just giving women experience. It's not all about just running sex parties. It's it's not all around just hanging out, hanging out with degenerate pickup artists. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about that. I don't want to be associated with that. I want to be of a man of integrity. I want to have really great women in my life. And I don't want to have dysfunctional fucking cocaine relationships cool man like everyone's like like man having women like 
some of the shit, dude, like it wasn't just like doing doggy style. Like some of the stuff, I don't know how much explicit I can be here, but when I you first went explicit. to a kink, go ahead. Think about this. When, when I first went to a kink party, man, I went there. I, I was so fucking nervous. I was wearing a black t-shirt like this, wearing black pants. Oh, I had like a little whip in my hand, fucking terrified out of my brain, you know, terrified seeing this shit go on. Like, what the fuck? Where this is am your I? First, this, this is your first party. Yeah, first party. I'm like, what the hell? How, how, did you, uh, how did you end up going there? Like, what was the, you were nervous to go there? Or like, what was the backstory? I met a connect. It was actually Shay connecting me with a mentor. And this guy will be unnamed for this because we had a bit of a falling out. But it's like, we connected, went to the party together. He just took me, he showed me the ropes. I didn't, I didn't know what BDSM was. I'm like, this is some weird shit. My, my mentor, my mentorship was this. Part of it, like early days was, I would go to the kink parties. I'd, I'd, I'd hold a little whip and see something tied from the ceiling. I'd be shitting myself, bro. That's how fucking far I've come. I'm like, what the hell is this? Having no sex toys. And then like, I remember at the fuck, this kink party, this guy who was teaching me, he would have like fucking five to nine women sometimes lining up to show him what, like to, for women to have experiences with him. And then he'd make these women squirt and shower the fucking audience in squirt. I'm watching this going, this is ridiculous, bro. And I'm holding like a sex toy G-spot vibrator. I'm sending you one of those soon inside of a pussy. The exact one that I love. There's so many on the mark, but this one holding it in there while he's doing whatever he's doing to her. And I'm just like embarking this. So that was my mentorship. And he's like talking, like say this to her. He's like teaching me about the depth of emotional connection, how to really open up with her, how like to do the actual technical aspects. So all this stuff, everyone's Very like- oh, hands-on training. Yeah, everyone's like, what books did you read? I'm like, I, didn't, I don't think I've even read, how many books have I read? I've read very few books on sexuality. Because I'm like, I didn't care about like, what's the sexual, what's, what's sex therapy? What's like, that's beautiful sex therapy. People who do that. Or what's, what's the anatomy of the clitoris and like, give me all the details or a doc, doctor's point of view. I'm like, I don't care. I just want to learn how to give women great experiences because then I'll feel better about myself. And then I'll be the fucking man from being told all shit in bed from that woman. Then what ended up happening, man, it was like, I just dived into that. And so you just learned, uh, quite literally from, from doing <laughs> by just someone learned. showing Over. you what to do. Bro, I remember when I was learning with the whip back in the day, I would be at his fucking house. They'd be put on music and he'd just be watching me whip this pillow for fucking hours so I could learn how to do it better. There's just it's hours. Like, uh, Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. Well, it's funny yeah. you say that because I, you know, I, yeah. <laughs> I was dating this girl, you know, back around the time I was like 31, 32. Um, yeah. And she was, you know, very, she was bisexual and she was like the first girl I really explored consistent threesomes and we started going to sex parties and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, we started going to some of these parties and like squirting, you know, that's kind of like the fun parlor trick, right? It's like everyone gets excited when someone's squirting. So I just assumed she wasn't a squirter because I couldn't do it, right? And I'd watched squirting tutorials before, and, you know, I had a pretty good idea of like what I was doing, I thought. And I had yeah. like accidentally made another girl squirt, but it, I don't think it was really like, I don't think I did it. I think she was already a squirter. Um, but one of the guys that, that we like at the sex party, we, we kind of like, you know, we, we swapped, like I hooked up with his girl, he hooked up with mine and he made her squirt. And I'm like, dude, show me how you did that. So he's <laughs> like, you know, he's, he's, he's going in there and like, I'm like, Oh, you put the pressure there. And he's like, yeah. And then he's like guiding my hand and showing me. And then I'm like, oh, I unlocked how to do it. And then after that, it was, you know, once you kind of get it, it's, it's like riding a bike. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously yeah. women are different, but but yeah, like that hands-on <laughs> literal changes experience. everything. Yeah. yeah. That's why my mentorship for me was the most powerful part of this. Like I had about six to eight mentors when it came to sexuality. And I just go, I want to learn everything I can. And yeah, the squirting party is amazing, man. I ran my one of my one of my first sex parties I ran. I made four women squirt for the first time within two minutes. It's like it's this if you're listening, it's like, how can you make a woman squirt? It's actually not just technique. The technique's the easy part. It's like, just this. Like, that's it. Like, Spider-Man, I talked about. You hit that. You don't move your finger. You actually move your arm. And right. you can actually you hear that her. sound. Then yeah, you know you're on the you right hear track. that and you know it's game over. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, watched, I did that, man. It's like, 
But the thing is, it's like, for me, it feels like such a blast from the past in a way. It's like, this stuff's fucking easy now. Like, the, I, I don't mean to sound like a dick, but it's like, it's so much deeper than that. When you really tap into this, when you learn all the techniques, you make a woman squirt, cool. I, I was obsessed with that because I'm like, I want to learn. Then I made a woman squirt, you make her come multiple times, she says you're amazing. But then you get to stage two, which is like how to come become that powerful masculine leader inside and out to the bedroom. And you do the techniques as well with the woman you fucking deeply care about. God damn. But it doesn't matter what journey you're on. I don't really care. But I'm like, the, I really want to harp on like how the best way to really facilitate amazing technique with her is the depth of the connection that you've created. The technique can only go as far as the connection that you've created with the woman. It doesn't mean you have to be married with her the rest of your, your life. But that is why when I was at that party and I made four women squirt for the first time in under two minutes, there was like a room of fucking like sometimes 10 to 15 guys watching. And I, it's like, how can I allow a place where she can relax? And I'd say stuff to her like, hey, do you want to do this? Are you sure? Yeah, I do. Hey, just let you know, there's no one here but me and you. I got you, yeah? If you squirt, you squirt. If you don't, you don't. But and I just want to let you know, fuck, you're so sexy. Oh, my God. Do you know how hot it's going to be? Just touch your pussy and play with you like this. And I just can't wait to like do this with you. I don't care. It's just me and you. Yeah. It's me and you here. No one else. Do you want to start? Yeah, let's start. So I'm doing this and there's like fucking 10, 15 people around watching. And then she would squirt because it's like the connection I created straight away. And I do the technique and I know the spot to hit. And it's like, wow, I've never done that before. Because most guys are just trying to just do the technique and that's it. But I really learned the depth of emotional connection and sexual connection as well is super important. And then the techniques are rocket fuel. And it's that's where I feel like SQL is a lot different in that respect. And then also allowing her to tap into her deeper softness and her silly and the savage. And when she can feel that you can tap into those as well, it's it's fucking game over, man. It's it, it really is game over. And that's why we've had mutual clients that we work to, with together and they go, oh, it's just, I was so funny when you said the other day, like some of your guys like, oh, can I post Andrew shit on your group? Is this cool? You're like, yeah, of course, bro, do what you want. But it's just, I might be saying it's sounding blase when I'm speaking about this, but it really gets to a point where you go, it's not a big deal and it's easy. And then you realize the depth of the connection that you create with the person who's in front of you and how you feel as well in the sexual experience that you're having, not just like giving her the experience, everything will change. Everything well, the, will change. You know, the, the interesting thing, I, I really like what you said when you said that the savage, the seductive, and the silly, those three? is it, or soft, soft, silly, savage, yeah. Soft, silly, savage, right? The, what that reminded me of is, you know, when, when you encounter a woman, you don't know what mood she's, well, you're going to, obviously you should be looking to see like what, what sort of mood is she in? How am I going to connect with this person? Right? Like what you described before was a girl who's at a sex party. Who's like, obviously, you know, she's got to be somewhat sexually liberated to be there in the first place. Right. Cool. But yeah. if you just walk over and you're like, I'm Mr. Fucking squirt master, I'm just going to, you know, like she's, she, she doesn't have that connection yet. So essentially what you demonstrated was, you know, <laughs> was like, all right, how can I, how can I create this container where it's just me and her, even though there's all these people watching, right. How can I kind of go into that bubble with her and get her mm. to feel comfortable with me? And then, mm that can lead to us opening up, right? Uh, or us having this amazing experience versus, you know, maybe yeah. there's another girl who's, she's in a silly mood, right? And so you go, you connect with her through the silly. And then, you know, that that's a different kind of inroad in. And that's why I love that, you know, essentially those, those three S's because, you know, you're not going with the same fucking plan every time. You're not Johnny, Mr. Squirt Arm, going to to try to essentially do that all the time right it's like all right where is she how can i connect with her and then how can that lead us down this journey of connection yeah do you, do you actually i can give you a demonstration right now not an actual physical demonstration of making a woman squirt but i can actually take you through the soft silly savage of how it could be of making a woman squirt so you can go through all those different energies man i can actually break that down which would be i think be very very helpful for the men listening on this so they can see what it is mm -hmm. yeah let's do it so just with a, um, a high level overview of the soft, silly, savage and how that came to fruition, the soft is like, how can you, it's all love. These are all love. It's not like one's love, like savage, like, oh my God, that's not love. I'm like, no, they're all aspects of love and being caring. 
it's like, and you're right, it's the calibration of what she needs in the moment. And then what, like, maybe you're both feeling more of a silly mood. There's a lot of, when it comes to softness, I was like, for men, don't open up, don't be emotional. But when I really break down the framework, it's more about how can you be that nice guy with a backbone, nice guy with boundaries. And how can, there's so many things. Like, and just to, just to be clear, this, this yeah. applies to not just when you're in a sex party for people listening. I you know some guys are very Absolutely. literal. They're like, Oh, is this only if you're in a sex? <laughs> no. no, this is if you're on a date or if you meet her through your friends, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's for all of it. Right. Yeah. This is my life's work of like inside and outside the bedroom. Like how can you be the soft, silly, savage inside and outside the bedroom? So like when you're inside the bedroom, it's like with the softness, it's like how can you have that open heart, deeply connect with her, be gentle, be super vulnerable, stuff like that. But then what happens is these movements where it's like, it gets lost, but it's like, just be vulnerable and just open your heart and just, and don't cry. Yeah, you tell like, that to a bunch of nice guys they are going to, and, and then you're in trouble. Simp all then, over the place. Yeah. So then, then that's why I'm, it's, it's fucked. And that's why mm-hmm. I see these movements. It's like, just no, you, but then they go the opposite. Like, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be a douchebag savagery. There's a difference between like being a boy savage and being a king savage. So the boy is like, just like fucking throwing it all over the shop and like, yeah, be the fucking man, do that, get on your foot. It's like, whoa, what the fuck? Opposed to like calibrating, like picking her up, throwing it down, get on your fucking knees now, and like, sh- like really having that more aggressive, primal face, it's like uh, allowing that fucking wild man to come out inside of you. And then the third aspect is the silly. A lot of very logical men get stuck in their mind thinking they can't be playful. A woman needs that playful and it's like a deep part of connection. So then when you can be playful, it allows you to actually your whole body to relax and not get so stuck in the moment and thinking it has to be so serious, this sexual encounter. It's a very high level overview about this, but you get what I'm saying. Now, when it comes to the bedroom, same with a woman and she hasn't squirted for the first time. So what I'll do is I'll have a conversation with her and I'll be like, I'll rest my hand over her pussy just like this or my hand will be just gently because it feels very because most guys just quickly try and go in there like as quick as they can even when they're fingering her i'll just have my hand resting over her pussy i'll even do this have my cheek on her pussy and i'll just like rest there and just connect with her a little bit and then i'll just go and speak in her room like hey i've got you so i'm gonna let you know i'm here we don't have to do anything no now i'm being really soft i just think you're really 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 brave for doing this and I just want to have our take our time and I really just enjoy the woman who you are and my god I can't wait to play and explore oh my god you're so fucking cheeky aren't you so then she's like oh my god she's laughing a little bit like hey I'm here if you want to stop you know how to stop and you might feel like you're going to pee a little bit don't worry it's not pee I've got you I just think you're such an incredible woman and I care about you I'm saying this to her I'm like look at that fucking booty and if, if there's people at a sex party and they're watching, like, look at that fucking booty. Do you know how jealous these men are going to be? That's fucking mine, all right? Is that my booty? So then I'm making a little joke. I'm making you feel comfortable. I'm being really soft. I'm letting you know how much I care. I'm like, I'm here for you. And then we do that. And then when I put my finger in, I put my finger in a pussy. I don't go two fingers straight away. I just put one finger and just do it on the outside. That's called in a circle on the outside of her pussy. And usually that's really good. Usually I give a woman a pussy massage before just making a squirt. But then when I'm on the inside, I start building that up and I'll, I'll be pushing her into the bed. And when I'm pushing her into the bed, I'm really building that up. I'm like, oh my God, you feel so fucking good. So I'm talking to her like, oh my, your pussy's so fucking wet. Oh God. And I, I even do this. It's so hot when you put your fingers inside a woman and then you put your fingers in your mouth and you taste it. And a woman's like, and when you taste it, you don't want to get so kind of licked your fucking tips. You're like, you want to fucking taste like, God, you taste so fucking good. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You serious? You taste so fucking goddamn. Oh my God. Oh, fuck. What am I going to do with you? So that's more of a savagery. So she can feel that animalistic fucking expression. Like, you just fucking taste so good. Oh, you have no idea what I'm going to do to you. Get the fuck on the bed. Oh my God. So I'm playing around with these dynamics of the fucking soft, silly savage. Then after I do that, I could slow down again. I'm like, ah, oh, look at this fucking sexy body, huh? Look at this sexy body. The woman who you are. Cool. And I keep going and I might need that savage. I right, fucking hold on, huh? Hold on. I'm going to make you fucking, I'm going to make you fucking squirt. Could you hear that noise? And like, I'm going, oh, come on, let it go. Let it fucking go. And then she's like, like let it fucking go. I'm like, keep going, keep going faster and faster, faster. It's like, oh, I'm about, I feel like I'm about to pee. You're not gonna pee. Let it go. And then she fucking ah oh, tense. <sighs> Release. It's not like fucking she's squirting all over the walls. It usually just fills up your hands and then like goes all over the bed. 
It's like tension, release. Go there close with her. Hey, how you doing? That was so fucking sexy. Pull her in close, whisper in her ear. That was so fucking sexy. My God. Oh my fucking God, you taste so good. Oh, take your time. Take some deep breaths in all the way to your belly. Take another deep breath in. Really embrace this whole moment. Yeah. Fuck. What a woman you are, huh? God, that was so sexy. So I'm constantly letting her know how fucking you're safe. You're sexy. I appreciate you. There's nowhere to be. There's nothing to do. This whole fucking thing, it's a journey. When guys well, try you're, and you're do playing technique. with these three energies, you know, you're yeah. kind of you're flipping from one to the other. And and um, you know, I think that's so important because guys get so stuck in like one way of being, right? Yeah. And and they're not and like you know, it, it, it's, it's so important to, to kind of figure out like, all right, well, which energy does this girl really resonate with? Right. Yeah. Cause it's like, some are really gonna like, as you were, as you were creating essentially that container for her to like feel comfortable and for her to feel sexy and mm -hmm. like kind of that slower, softer energy, I guess, you know, it's like some girls are really going to need that. And then, right. Like I've, I've, been with a lot of girls who are, who are like, they're all about fun, you know? And it's just that playful, the silly energy is, is the one they're going to really resonate with, you know? And it's like yeah. knowing that the, the, the thing that I would be concerned, cause like knowing, knowing guys who like, you know, watch content on the internet is like, okay, I'm going to do it exactly like Andrew. And then they <laughs> fuck it all up because they're like totally being disingenuous, right? They're like, oh, I, I thought I was, you know, right? And it's like, no, <laughs> you have to remember the three energies and then actually be there present with her, like you said, and yeah. know which one is necessary. Yeah, it's a high level overview as well. Just for you watching, it's like, this is like, I just wanted to do that. I don't, I don't know why the conversation led to here, but this is the stuff I was, I I was pretty turned on. <laughs> yeah, that's all, that's all I care. That's all I try to do. That's all, that's all that matters. But this is like my life's work and we usually help men go through this for like a year long program or like a really intense five day retreat. So if you're not getting the full fullness of it now, it is completely fine. And those retreats look wild, by the way, those look like, I mean, I, I, you know, the, the trailer you have on your YouTube, um, with that retreat, I mean, first of all, the girls are incredibly beautiful that, that you bring, which is, I mean, I, I, you know, I've, I've been in the game forever and they used to have these events up in San Francisco and it's like the girls that they always got to these things are like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to be any part of that. Um, mm -hmm. it's like, all you know, you get what I mean. But like, so I was yeah. really impressed. Uh, um, you know, that, that video should showed all of these dynamics and these energies. Um, and it just looked like an amazing transformational, you know, yeah. retreat that those guys were on. Thanks brother. And yeah, it's, this is the, the key, the soft, the silly, the savage inside and outside the bedroom. And when you tap into that, women will feel that because when you tap into that for yourself, it allows a woman to touch into that, tap into that naturally. And a hundred percent just want to let everyone know it is consensual. Everything I'm doing is consensual. You might go, well, this is intense, but sometimes a woman might come at you with like this, like really fucking savage energy. And if you're coming in with a soft energy, what's going to happen is it's just going to, She's gonna get. She's gonna blow you out of the water, bro. Yeah, you're. So fucked. if a woman's coming, at, if a woman's coming like at me, I've come. I've had women come like fucking like. So yeah, what do you got? What are you gonna do to me? You know what I literally do in that fucking position? I'll run my hand through the back of her really quick, pull her fucking hand down, I'm like you have fucking no idea what I'm gonna do to you. And then I'll pin her against the wall, or I'll grab her by the fucking throat and drop her to her fucking knees. I'm like, shut the fuck up. And she's really turned on in that moment. So that's one. I said, or I could do the caveman. Which is like, she's like there. She's like, yeah, what are you going to do to me? I literally push her on the shoulder a little bit, a bit of a playful push. She's like, whoa, okay. And then I pick her up and throw her around and I slam her on the fucking bed. And then I pin her down. I'm like, you have no fucking idea what I'm going to do to you. Just lay there and shut the fuck up. And she's like, whoa. And she's like, God, you get me. Oh, he just gets me. It's like, this is why it's so fucking backwards with fucking attraction where people are like, that sounds rapey. I'm like, what the fuck? But it's all If contextual. I had a dollar for all the times I've heard from women, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, w I just wish a guy would tell me to shut the fuck up. I'd be rich because yeah. there, there's Bro. so many, there's so many women who play this like 
dominating, you know, domineering, like they're like that at work because they have high powered jobs. Like feminism has created this sort of archetype of women. And that woman, she wants to be told to shut the fuck up. Like she, it's so hard for her to find that guy in a loving yeah. way, of course, but like with the energy that you brought, like it's, you know, I had an ex-girlfriend literally tell me the other day, like <laughs> this new guy I'm dating, he's great. He actually tells me to shut the fuck up. Like you used to, this is amazing. It's so hard to find. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is all underlying this, it's all love and care and like in right. contextual as well. You, you got your relationship, your partner, you know what she wants. Like I know when I'm with my partner and I'm like, yo, get on your fucking knees and we're going to play. And she's like, oh, thank God. So what the ultimate gift you can give a woman is your presence and your care and your love and what this does with the presence. She can get out of her head and stop thinking about day-to-day -day things. Like, I've got to do this, 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 masculine pursuits. How can you go be here? It's all just me and you. Breathe, and I'm leading her through this experience. So sometimes I might walk in the door, see the woman I'm with, like push her against the wall and make out with her so fucking passionately. Like you have no idea what I'm going to do to you later. Now go to the fucking bedroom and go on all fours and wait for me. It's like this level of leadership and like a little thing that a little tip that I can give you when you're with your partner. It's like fucking hilarious. I love doing this one. It's so like a dominant frame. Like tonight, babe, we're going to be ready by seven o'clock. Leave your panties and your purse at home. You're taking that role. This is why I say dominance is leadership. And if we really tap into that, how many men are just not leading? They're not taking the lead. You can lead a woman through softness, silly and savage. It's not about like you have to tell her to shut the fuck up and get on her knees. And that's the only way you lead her. You lead her by holding her hand when you're walking down the street. You lead her by holding your hand on top, not underneath and going, where are we going today? What are we doing? Like, what the fuck is most men doing? This is what's crazy shit. This is why women are not turned on. That's why their pussies aren't wet. That's why they don't want to fuck you. That's why they won't drop to their knees. That's why, how many, like we've been on retreats, bro, hilarious. When like, fuck, the women on my retreats are brutal, but the guys need to hear it. The one, one, last retreat, one of the guys like, yeah, Isabel, I want you to get on your knees. And she's like, no, you get on your fucking knees because she didn't feel the fucking, it was true that what he was saying. So it's like, we're going to hold these men to high levels of a deep accountability of who they are. Because if not, this is a training ground for the real world. And we make sure that men go through this in-depth fucking process because most of the time men are just going to get on their fucking knees because they don't have that backbone and they don't have the, the confidence in actually saying it in a way that's actually going to turn the woman on. Or she doesn't trust his fucking leadership in the inside and outside the bedroom. Hence, she won't drop to her knees. And goes, yeah, oh, and I haven't, if, I haven't had a blowjob. It's your fault. It's your fault you haven't had a blowjob, buddy. It's your fault that she, she, um, she's had se fucking bad sex. It's all your fault. And guys don't want to take that responsibility. They well, don't. you have to start with taking that responsibility because it's like you, you don't get to just be dominant in the bedroom, right? If you're, if you're like a simping nice guy the rest of the time and then you're like, oh, I heard this podcast where, you know, Andrew and Robbie were talking about telling a girl to like shut the fuck up and get down on her knees. You go try that in the bedroom and you're not embodying that guy in the rest of your life. <laughs> She's going to laugh in your face. And be like, Oh, yeah, sure, buddy. Go, good luck yeah. with that. And you know, walk out of the room. <laughs> well, the shit, that, that shit I learned on the podcast sure didn't work. <laughs> so, yeah. You can't, you can't treat women like that. that all the time. But the thing is, Robbie, I'm going to say for this, Robbie is one of the nicest guys I've ever met, but he has a backbone. That's the difference. And that's what women respect. But this is where guys get the, the, the pole opposite. They go nice and then they go complete fucking douchebag. But they go, don't go, I'm going to be so loving, gentle, kind and compassionate and caring to the woman. And then I'm also going to have a backbone and I'm going to set boundaries and I'm going to have expectations. And I'm also going to fucking care about myself to not fucking deal with bullshit. And there's like this internal boundary that's set and women can feel that. Then you can say what you want because she goes, ah, oh, this guy, oh, I respect this guy. And what most women need is just a man who just allows them to get out of their head and into their body and completely just surrendering. Going, oh, I don't have to think. That is the key. Yeah, that's extremely hard for them to find because you have to be a grounded, you know, confident masculine individual to be able to let a girl essentially relax into her feminine. And uh, it takes a lot of a lot of growth to get there. So much, man. Depending on where you're starting. For me, it took me, fuck, I don't know, to be able to do that consistently, maybe seven or eight years. I mean, 
I was uh, stumbling around in the dark for quite some time, but that's a, you know, that's a, that's a journey in itself. Um, I wanted to switch gears a little bit and, and I know a lot of guys, um, you know, we, we, I pulled some of the guys in my community and, and, uh, what, what you talked about earlier and what you shared so authentically, uh, and bravely, um, about your, you know, you contracted herpes and like, how, how can guys navigate that? Cause that's, you know, that's gotta be difficult. Yeah. Great question. When I first found out I had herpes, man, I bawled my eyes out. I called a buddy and I just go, fuck my life's fucked. I'm never going to have sex. Did again. you know how you got it? I don't exactly know. Cause I, it was on and off for quite some time, but I didn't really know it was herpes at the time. Like, what is this? And then I realized when I had it, when I talked, because like I'd go out and get tested, and I wouldn't have anything on the test. But then, like I'm like, this keeps popping up, so I didn't really have a lot of information about what it was back then. And because I never really looked into STDs, like I just wanted to learn how to be good in bed. So everyone's like, oh well, you're a sexual educator, you should know all about this. I'm like I just didn't. And I don't really. I only know now because it purely affects my life. And now I bawled my bawled my fucking eyes out. I thought my sex life was fucked forever. But then. I'm like, okay, how can I sit with this now and know I've got this? So does 30 to 40% of the population, around 30% on average, most of the studies have said, but most people don't ever want to talk about it. Then 95% of the population has a cold sore, which is the same thing, but it's either up here or down there. So how many times do I get a cold sore a year? I don't even know. I don't even, I can't even remember the last time I got that. I can't even remember the last time I had a an, an outbreak on my genitals. So it's more about the way you can bring this up with women. I can talk about the whole script, so to speak, that I use when I am communicating this with a woman for the first time and what is her fears and stuff like that, that she might get passed on to her and all these things. So I can talk about that. But then also the emotional aspect of herpes. Herpes is actually connected deeply emotionally to you. So if I feel like I'm like really stressed or I'm feeling like maybe I shouldn't connect with this woman, I might have an outbreak. Um, beforehand because it's like my body it's like i've be, i've come to terms with because like if i'm really relaxed around a woman i won't get an outbreak but if i'm really fucking stressed or maybe i don't feel like this is the person i should be with i'll get an outbreak or maybe like you maybe you might be watching this and you go oh but i just go I'm with a woman and, uh, and an outbreak happens because i really like her then you're gonna have to have a conversation and what I've realized is the women I've spoke to about this, they are so fucking cool about it. It's the way you frame it and the way you come across and then the way you break it down with her. And that's everything. Yeah, let's get into that. Cool. And yeah, just I did feel fucked and up. And just man. to, to, to I, piggyback I on what you said, um, yeah. you know, I feel like you could you could apply what you said to a lot of sexual dysfunction as well. Like when I'm uncomfortable in a situation sexually, like hmm. I'm not going to be able to get it up. Um, like I'm in my head. Right. And, and guys are, you know, I, I stumbled around for a long time feeling like there was something wrong with me in that department. It was like, no, I just wasn't comfortable. Right. And I was trying to do all these things to like make her comfortable, but I was like, but I'm not comfortable. So I needed to figure that stuff out. I need to be like, Oh, well you can't just be all about her, right? The the t- stereotypical Jewish nice guy who's just like, you know, the obsessive lover. Like, ah, I I'm so not selfish. I'm like almost selfish, if that makes sense. It's like you want her to come so bad, and you want her to have this experience so bad to validate yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just it's a kind of backwards thing. But like, it, it's so interesting what you said because yeah, if you're uncomfortable, your body's going to have that reaction. Like your body's not going to cooperate if your head's not on straight. Hundred percent and. 90% of the time for a premature ejaculation or rectal dysfunction or delayed ejaculation, which means you just can't come even if you try. It's emotional and mental. A lot of guys I talk to, I'm like, how do you, like, can you get it up by yourself? Yep. How do you go with your um, parts, past partners? Can you get it up? Cool. And you got a new woman in your life and you're like, oh, I can't get it up. There's something wrong with me. I'm like, no. It's the connection. Your cock is connected to your heart and your head. That's it. And the story is all around that. And we're trying so hard, how can we make a woman feel comfortable? But you said it right, man. How can we feel comfortable? So uh, the thing is, everyone's like, oh, Andrew's this fucking sex god and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, if I'm not comfortable with a woman, I'm not going to get her up. 
I need to build that comfortability and that connection. Because my the more I've gone on this journey, like I need that so, so much more. And like if I'm with a woman now and I'm connected and comfortable, I'll hear her voice and I'll get a bone off. That's the difference. I'm sure that I'm sure that's similar for you, brother, and like all the other men out there, they can probably relate. But then they think they're fucked up if they're with a new woman and they're not completely comfortable and they have to be have this rock hard boner because that's their value and worth as men, which is not. So when I'm with a woman for the first time, will I get it up straight away? It depends if I feel really comfortable. And then number two, it is my due diligence to bring up herpes. As much as I can kiss a woman right now, just for an example, and I don't have a cold sore, at the same time, you can only contract um, a cold sore if you fucking have one at the time and give her a kiss. But when you have genital herpes, it's the same thing. When you have an outbreak, that's the only time you can transfer that. But it's my due diligence to be able to like express this to the woman so then she can make an informed decision if she wants to continue or not continue in this sexual connection. So you can get a hand job and stuff like that. But anything that is swapping saliva, then I do bring this up. And I'll, I'll give it with a story, a few stories, and I think that will encapsulate how I did this. And I'll give a really tough one. I was with this, I was with this woman. I really liked her, man. Really fucking liked her. And I haven't told her about the herpes yet. I'm like, oh god, we're getting to the bedroom. She's like, I'm gonna go. I'm like, I was playing with her, giving her experience, and she had a really good time. And then the next night, I went to her house, and I went to, her. and then she's like, I always want to please you tonight. I want to give to you. And I'm like, fuck, I'm in the bed. And then I'm like, she's about to go down. And I'm like, can you please stop? And she's like, what's going on? And it got to this point, because this was one of the first times I said to him, like, hey, this is really hard for me to bring up, but I want to let you know, like, this is not you. I'd love you to go down on me right now, but I just want to bring something up. I've actually, this is my situation. This is my sexual health. This, I contracted this a while ago. I don't know where it is at the moment. I don't have an outbreak, which means I'm all good. But at the same time, there could be a possibility that that could, that could be passed on to you. And I'd hate for that to happen. But at the same time, I want you to make sure that you're making an informed decision for yourself. And if you want to continue, you can continue. But if you don't, I completely understand and respect your decision. And I just sat there. Because, and then you say that, you've got to fucking sit with the tension because you go like, nah, I'm, I'm not down. Mm-hmm. She said, and you know what she looked at me, man? She goes, she looked at me, she goes, you are so fucking cool. I appreciate you so much. And that is completely fine. Thank you for letting me know. And I'm so happy to continue. And I just started crying, man, because it was like, this is the, this is the fucking depth behind it. Like, like guys like, oh, fucking just tough guy. Like this, I'm like, we're all fucking like got a heart, man. Like, and I just cried because I'm like, fuck. She sees me and she accepts me for who I am. So that was one aspect. And I'll give one more of an aspect about like a one night stand. So I had like a more of like a casual relationship with this woman and she was Russian. So her English wasn't the best. So I wanted to make sure that she knew actually the whole parameters of what, what it was. I never forget. She's at my house and I'm like, hey, before we, you know, and we're making the sex symbol with my hands. If this is on a podcast, I'm like, before we do this, I have to let you know something and I'm speaking a lot slower, shit like this. I'm like, I have um, something on my penis. I drew it on the fucking whiteboard. I'm like, at the moment, my penis is good. And I'm like, there's nothing, there's no dots. Sometimes it gets dots and not good. Then we can't have sex. Now it's good, but here it's not good to have sex. Are you still? And then she, I'm like, would you like to have sex? Still? She's like, Okay, let's do. So we end up having sex, but I just explained that to her and really broke that down. There's no, there's no easy way to have this conversation. And that's the thing. A lot of guys are looking for the easy conversation and the best way to do this. I just let women know, I'm like, here it is. Here's what's happening. Here's the chances of you contracting. If I have an outbreak, I'll let you know. I believe the universe gives people, like, of course, fucking, fucking around if you're or you can just see it pragmatically. I just fucking caught it from someone because they're having sex. But I really believe the universe gives you these fucking challenges because it, it, it forces you to be more fucking humble. But also, now it's a message that I can really help a lot of men. The amount of men who have reached out with STDs is fucking ridiculous, dude. Ridiculous. Oh, I can imagine. Who, who, yeah. who go, I feel fucked up. How do I bring this conversation up? 
because I want to be with this person. And I just break this down like this and it helps so many men just from that perspective. Also, erectile dysfunction. I even say this I'm like, hey, let's just take, I say this for myself. Hey, let's say her name is Pamela. Hey, Pamela, you don't say this on a first date. Like you just walk in, you're out to say you, you go out for the first date and you're like, I've got herpes. This, like, I can't get it up. Like, it's so uncalibrated. I say this when I feel like there's that sexual tension being built and you just know it's going to go down and you just, you have that feeling like, okay, we are going to sexually connect. So then when I do that and you start feeling and you maybe have had already had the first kiss and then you can bring the conversation up. That's when I do it. And then when I brought that conversation up with her, I'll say something like, hey, I just want to let you know something. Let's just take our time. Let's just really enjoy. Let's explore. Let's not take this so seriously. And just like really, just like step by step. Also, because when I'm with someone new, I need time myself because it's not always going to be just like, like this, like rock solid. It's sometimes he just needs a little bit of time to get to know you. I say that in, in that way. And like the, I say it in a loose way. Like I say it in like a conversation way. Like he just needs a little bit more time to get you to know you so he can go up. So if he doesn't, if he doesn't sometimes go up straight away, don't take it personally. It just, I have no problems. It just needs a little bit of time to connect with you. And then women, most women are absolutely fucking so appreciative and understanding. Also, what I want to bring up with you about my sexual health, and I'd love to know a little bit about yours. It's, oh, sorry, I'll step back with the, the reason you say that with the erection thing is so she doesn't feel like, fuck, is it me? It's Does he not fault, find me right? a train? Yeah. So, and then she's like, oh, okay, cool. So then she feels connected. And you just feel how, it feels like this, this is like, Thing, you feel so much more connected to the person. And then I say about the herpes, well, my, I also want to bring up some stuff about my sexual health. I've actually got herpes. I don't actually have an outbreak at the moment. And then I give her the whole spiel in the speech. And what happens is like, she just feels like, thank you so much for bringing that up. And if you bring it up in that way, you watch how appreciative of women will be and how much like, will be like thank you. Now you get the odd, odd occasion where women will be like, you can't get it up, what's wrong with you? But the best part is if a woman does that, I don't want that fucking woman in my life. Oh, That's totally. it. Yeah. She's just like, she's like. That's such a huge red flag, black flag. It's like, really? That's, <laughs> That's the, like when you're man. vulnerable and they shit on you? Like, I mean, first of all, like you said, almost <laughs> never happens. You know, I, I would I would almost bet money on that never happening because it's like you don't find people that fucked up very often, right? So yeah. And but, if, but they, if you so do, rare for, mm -hmm. yeah, and if you do, they just show, they've just shown their colors. You're like, oh, like I see the quality of the woman who you are behind your physical facade. Like I'm out. Right. So are you so saying? rare. It's so rare for a woman to meet a guy who's comfortable and confident enough with himself to have that conversation with her. Right. Because, mm. you know, guy, guys don't, very few guys are capable of doing that. They'll just kind of not say anything or they'll, you know, they'll just have the problem and then the girl will be like, oh shit, it's, it must be me. And then it gets awkward. Right. And then it's awkward. It's, yeah. it's basically, you're not getting that, that next date. It's you've killed the, yeah. the energy there. Right. Yeah. Um, and if you don't so, say it, and if you don't say it, man, what happens is like, if you're not going to say that you've got possibly an ST, STD, it's going to possibly restrict your erections or you're going to come quicker because you feel like you're holding and hiding something from her which locks you up in your head fuck i know i need to say this but right. i'm not saying it then you're so then you're stuck it. yeah so yeah. all that it's like and this is the best part this is the soft side so if we could look at the soft silly side, you're talking about the softness outside the bedroom a lot of guys are just like maybe trying to be silly or they're trying to be savage like i'll do this to you i'll do that or they're trying to be like oh everything's fun 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 but it's like this is where she can see the whole perspective and the whole gamut of who you are and you can build such a a depth of the masculine character in the man who you are and this is where women really connect to the whole the whole gamut of the the spectrum not just like one aspect of you what do you say to the guy who has like he has issues lasting long enough yeah and he Great knows question. that going in right and he's like oh fuck and he's having that anxiety like yeah is there something you can say to the girl to essentially like I don't yeah. know, warn her but not really warn her right like I, I with, got, the, yeah. with the 
you know. Yeah, so she, so you've already kissed, you feel it going down, she's starting to touch you there. Like, whew, just want to let you know, hey, and I say it like this, everything is the tonality and the way you say it. You don't want to go, sometimes I come quickly and uh, I'm a really bad man and I hope you like me, please. You, you say it like this, like, go, yo, she's touching you, like, whoa, whoa, easy, tiger. Hey, just want to let you know, sometimes if you touch this, if you touch me down there, he's going to pop a little bit soon just because, you know, he's, he's super turn on. Fuck, you are sexy. So... If he pops a little bit soon, just chill. And guess what? We'll be back in action soon. So you just play it off like it's no big deal. And like, or you can just keep it simple. Like, yeah, this champagne bottle sometimes goes off a bit quick. So, you know, if it does, <laughs> we all good. So I always play it off like it's no big deal. So you right. say that. And then if you do, if you do come within two minutes, don't go look down and go, fuck, fuck, don't do that. Just be like, whew, fucking hell, you're sexy. Thank God, thank God the Lord gave me these hands to work them. So I'm going to work some magic now. So lay back and enjoy the show. So I'm never taking it serious. I can always go down. I can always do, that's why I talk about, I have a course like four play mastery, like an unashamed plug. It's like the reason I fucking put this together, it's fucking 47 fucking dollars. Only that because I'm like, God's like, what happens if I come too soon? I can't get it up. I can't, I fucking all this shit. Because it's like, go do the fantastic five. Learn how to be a really great kisser. Learn how to give her a pussy massage. Basically, learn how to finger her. Learn how to make her squirt. Have a fucking sick toy that you use in the bedroom and then how to eat her out. You do that, she's going to forget that you fucking came too fucking quick. Then you can recharge. And then if you do come too soon, you don't even fucking, you, you, you don't even make it a big deal. Nothing's ever a big deal in the bedroom. And you watch, when you do that, women will be so comfortable. And if you just like, even guys, if they get an erection, they lose it. You're just like, oh, fucking, God, he's going to sleep again. What the fuck? Hey, come on, Target, let's go. And the more comfortable you get, and she laughs, like you got to talk to him, tell him you love, tell him you love him, like say so shit like this, because so it makes me laugh and it makes me relax. And then when she's relaxed, right. we have this conversation. And then if I come too quick again, another thing I say, I'm like, woo, God damn, he fucking went off like a frog in a sock. That's an Australian thing to say. He he <laughs> popped a little bit quick. Yeah, <laughs> he popped a little bit quick one. today, didn't he? Yeah, I just I just whatever you want to say, it's just like the champagne bottle popped. It popped a little bit early, like woof. God damn, you got the you got the poison out quickly today, didn't you? Like, how did you do that, huh? This is all your fault. So then I pretend to blame him. Like, it's, it's, it's all you. It's all your fault for being too hot. <laughs> Love it. Those are awesome, man. That's uh, you know, I feel like it's so important for the guys to have just like, all right, if this situation is going to happen, here's how I'm prepared because it's that anxiety that that really fucks guys up. Oh, for sure. It's like, if I go into this, what am I going to say? You know, I do come too quick and then she'll look at me. Man, fuck, I wish I knew all this stuff back in the day. It's because mm -hmm. uh, how many times I go into sexual encounters, I'm like, fuck, I could, I, if I get into this and I don't, can't get it up, what am I going to say? What am I going to do if I come too fucking quick? Like, you got this now. Like, these are the things you can use immediately. And I really hope that you do the dating work with Robbie so then you now can actually not feel like held back and tense, like, um, what happens when I go to the bedroom with a woman? Right. I think this is what happens. So many men take it so seriously in the bedroom instead of going, let's not be so serious in the bedroom and have a little bit more fun and, and just like not take us, take the whole situation so seriously, the sexual experience so seriously and what's actually going to go down. And then not literally, but just like what's going to happen in the bedroom. And when you do that, this is, this is actually, I say this behind my closed doors and this, hopefully this will make sense. I always say, cool, back in the day, like how to be the best you've ever had. The best, the way to be the best she's ever had is to go into the, with the mindset of like, I'm going to be the worst she's ever had. So then you're like, you don't actually give a fuck about like you trying to perform and be this superhero in the bedroom. And by taking off that pressure of like trying to do, be the man, you just like allow yourself to have fun and not take it so seriously. Sex is, is such a, a potential to like deepen a relationship and, and, you know, have fun. There's like so many different energies of sex. And when guys get so caught up on like, you know, the energy that they, they're like used to probably from watching porn, right? Yeah. Like it's got to be like this and this is what's going to work and this is how she's going to come. And it's like, you know, it, it would be like only having one experience of food. You know, it's like you can only eat a steak. But you're like, well, there's like dessert and then there's like pasta and there's like there's all these different energies around food, right? It's like, no, we can only have fucking steak. And, you know, so I see that a lot with guys. And I mean, that's that was kind of my experience, too, because like, you know, when I first got into stuff, I thought it was like very much like this is how you do it. And it was what I had seen in porn. And luckily, yeah. 
you know, I'm 41. So when I was growing up, porn wasn't so readily, you know, easily available. Like I had to, you know, steal like, you know, the scrambler box, uh, <laughs> to, you know, watch, watching porn <laughs> like behind the, uh, the popcorn on the screen, but <laughs> So he eating popcorn with one hand, jerking with the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like the when, when not the snow on the screen, you know, where it's like you can sort of see what's going on behind, where but it's like uh, yeah, it's yeah. blurry. Yeah, <laughs> popcorn's the wrong word. <laughs> okay, that, that makes sense, dude. Yeah. It's, so, a huh. follow up question, you know, for like if w- once like. So if someone has herpes or listening to this, now they kind of know like how to have that conversation. Is there anything you would recommend in terms of like preventing transmission or like, you know, medicine? Obviously, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of, you know, people should consult a doctor or, or whatnot. But like from what I've heard is that most people can just kind of get on, you know, I think it's Valtrex or something like that. And, it, and a lot of people just never have an outbreak again or it's very manageable. And then you can just like not have sex when you have an outbreak, basically, and the mm. the risk of actually spreading that is close to zero. Is that all correct? Yeah, I've been with my partners and having unprotected sex, and they haven't caught it from me. Mm-hmm. And it was a partner I was, I was with for two years. And there was another partner I was with for four months, and not nothing, man. And I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hippie at heart anyway, so I don't actually do pharmaceuticals. And if I feel like, an, I, you feel it, like you feel like itchy starting that feeling, you start maybe seeing a few things. I just won't have sex. I'll just tell my partner, like, hey, let's just wait a week and that's fine. And I just, I just acknowledge that it's, that it sounds so fucking woo woo, but mate, it's connected to, the woman I'm with and it's connected to if I actually want to be, if I don't want to have sex with a woman, I remember when I was a bit, bit gallivanting around, I got an outbreak because I was just being fucking disingenuous with my sexual connections with this, with um, a few women. I didn't really want to be there. So I got an outbreak. My body's like, no, you're being basically a dickhead. You got an outbreak. I've, I've been with a woman now for about a year and a bit. I haven't got an outbreak once. The reason is, Oh, so over a year, I'm going to outbreak once because I just feel so aligned. This is why the head, heart and body connection is so important. And if you get an outbreak, cool, you can go, okay, what's going on? Did I eat too much sugar? But I've had days where I ate fuck tons of sugar. I never got an outbreak or I had like a, like, like Christmas birthday celebrations. And then I always used to link it to food. It's not, it's so much deeper than just the physical element. So I don't know too much about the actual doctrine aspects of things, but I've just seen like how I respond and I've talked and spoken to other people who have herpes and they'll say the exact same thing that i'm saying and then they'll go okay it is deeply emotionally linked as well and same with your erections and i see the same with your your erections are linked to your fucking heart and how you're feeling about it boom like if i told you right now robbie get an erection you'd be like well if you did we'd have another conversation another podcast but (laughs) you know but chances are if i said get it up right now robbie you're not going to but then what's the difference when they're with a hot woman and that's the thing as well guys like oh she's hot i should be able to get up like no it's not a woman's external hotness, which is going to create the erection. It's, it's usually her fucking sexual vitality. And what I mean by that, it's her sexual essence. I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but you could see a woman who's far less attractive than just like, if we just talk about a scale, but then you're just like, fuck, I'm just so drawn to her. It's usually because she is so comfortable and confident in her sexual energy and she's so connected to her body. Then you could have a fucking exceptionally, let's say the 10 out of 10 woman in your head, physical, only physically, but then you might not be able to get it up just because she's so disconnected from her own sexual essence. It's like, oh, don't touch me there. Well, okay, whatever it may be. Now, I'm only making a generalized overview. I'm not saying that all very attractive women and, and vice versa, but I hope that analogy makes sense because I've had it for myself. I've had very women who I wouldn't find, who I wouldn't usually be attracted to, but I was just so drawn to because of their sexual essence. Oh yeah. I mean, I've, I've had some experiences where it's just like the way a woman smells or like <laughs> the, like I, I remember having this experience with a, a girl I met in Budapest where like the way she kissed me was like so radically different. And it was like a mixture of like how she kissed me and what she tasted like. It was just like something in my brain, like went, yeah. I was like, 
that's good, you know, but, and, and it was, she wasn't, she wasn't like the most, like the hottest girl ever. She was cute, but like that, for whatever that happened there, whatever sort of physical reaction, like she went up like four points <laughs> on the yeah. scale. You know? So, you know, it, it, it the, there, there's such an energetic component of this. It's, it's interesting. So I, I actually have an, a, a personal question. Um, and I've asked this actually in my group and I've, I've shared about this and, um, you know, it's, it's kind of embarrassing to talk about considering like the amount of experience that I've had, but just so, so my journey with sort of like sexual dysfunction, when I first got into this stuff, I, I was like, you know, the sort of premature ejaculator, you could say. And yeah. I, I was able to combat that and essentially using the techniques, a lot of, you talk a lot about those in your, in your products, um, you know, slowing mm -hmm. down foreplay and, I got to the point where it was no longer a problem, especially when I was like, you know, drinking and partying and like anytime I was like in the zone, never an <laughs> issue. I, I was in full control. I could last. And then what I noticed was that like I, my problem shifted to a different problem. And that's when I was in a relationship for a long enough time where then the premature ejaculation would come back. So it was mm -hmm. like, only with long-term partners, even when the sex was amazing for like the first couple months. And then like once we kind of settled in to a, you know, sort of committed or a more regular thing, then the premature ejaculation shit came back. And it yeah. wouldn't really matter if I was like, you know, doing foreplay or slowing down. It would, it would still kind of resurface. So I'm curious if you have any, you know, have you heard of that before? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So I'm only speculating here with that because with, the reason I say the speculation for premature ejaculation and erectile dysfunction because it is so multifaceted. When people say it's one thing and that's it, it's not. I actually have a whole team of people that go into depth about this. We go through mental, emotional, and physical. A huge assessment for this. That's why it's such an in-depth topic. Like, most guys, I can just help with it, just a few little things like, yeah, the slowing down but, and breathing and different aspects of that. But there there are some harder cases when, when it comes to that. Now, with what you're well, saying... Given, given those things, it has to be emotional, right? It has to... There's obviously 100%. some trigger, right? Because yeah. it's like, why would it be normal and then a problem, right? Yeah, so, I got you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got you. I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what this is. And what happens is if you go... How relaxed and how relaxed can you be in the bedroom with a woman? That's the number one thing. When you're relaxed, you will last longer. You'll get that erection. And because you feel connected and emotionally connected to the woman, great. The thing is, you might have gone into this connection with this woman and then you had nothing to lose. You're like, ah, oh, because you're Robbie, the fucking dude who had as many fucking events to go to and as much women as you wanted. So you're like, oh, it's another woman if she doesn't want to be. So you've got this thing called the last chance mindset basically means like yeah if she doesn't come back it's okay no problems and then you keep doing that over and over and like oh great she's a great woman but now what i possibly see is you cancelled out all the other women in your life and now it's just you and her and what happens is fuck you've got more to lose so then that anxiety hits again like fuck tension tension here mm, tension in mm -hmm. your throat tension in your chest and then all and then tense there instead of going oh fuck okay i'm aware of this this is my one and only so to speak and i just can't if this fucks up i just can't run off and get another woman so then like your your back door mm, there's a different version of the anxiety that's interesting yeah so yeah there's two aspects of it like i if i if i'm gonna get if i if i go down this route and i'm with her long time oh my god now it's just me and her or it's like Oof, am I going to be able to get this up? And if I can't get this up, I'm a fucking loser. I'm a failure. And then it's like, it's only momentary or it could be long-term. So there's two different aspects of it as well. Yeah. Right. Or the, the, the double, the double whammy. It's like, I'm not going to get it up, but if I do get it up, I'm going to come super fast. Yeah. hundred percent. Right? Be... So yeah, you back in the day, like say, say you were example, like, oh, I'd come too quick with women who I've just met because you're nervous of meeting her on the first night. I'm like, oh my God, it's a new woman. So I'm going to come really quick. But then now you've got the opposite. Like I'm with this lot woman long term. Now I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to come really quick because I've got 
I can't actually meet other women. But at the start, you're like, oh my God, I might ne never see a woman ever again. Like guys who are like more in scarcity, I might never see a woman again. So they're more nervous and they go, I want to perform. So then they get more in the head. So that was what I was trying to say before. Right. <laughs> Hence a little bit of my confusion just then. But yeah, that's it. And then that's why it, that's why it's so subjective to the person where it's at. So then possibly what you've got going on, man, if you're saying it's for now, it could be more to lose. And then when you get in contact with that part of yourself in your mind, like, cool, let's sit with this for a little bit and what comes up through this and you get more relaxed. Going, okay, how can I deepen my relationship and my connection with my partner? And by doing that purely with the sexual um, aspect of it, you can have that conversation with her purely from what we said today and that will alleviate a lot of the, like, just even the conversation alone will alleviate a bit of the anxiety. Like this is probably why I might come a little bit quick because of I feel like I've got like there's no other woman I'm going to be with, just you. And now it's like I feel like I have to perform sometimes because we're being pushed in our head so much to perform. And now you can't go elsewhere to go, oh fuck, this one fucked up. You can't do that, man. You're married to an incredible right. woman who I know you love dearly. So that's the difference. Well, the good and news is I've had the conversation. Not a big deal. When it happens, yeah. I just own it and it's fine. Yeah. And, yeah. but it, I think that, I, I think what you just said in terms of, cause I felt like there's some anxiety there and I couldn't put my finger on it. Like, and I, I think that, that I'm really curious just to, to kind of meditate on that. Cause that might solve the problem. And if it doesn't, I'll hit you up, but it's yeah, like, sure. I, I feel like that was, that's a very big sort of aha unlock moment I just had because like, oh, it's just the reverse side of the anxiety. but it, you know, because it's like the, there's different stakes, but the stakes are on the back end. I don't want to intrude at all. And you, this is for you to have a con contemplate and everything may be completely great. But usually if I couldn't get it up with a woman in a relationship, mine was more like sometimes I couldn't get it up. It's, it's like there was something unsaid in the relationship or maybe there was something unsaid inside or outside the bedroom. And maybe like oh, if, I, if you're consistently coming quickly, and beforehand you weren't and it's not like okay you you come to peace with the fact like okay this is my long-term partner i'm cool with that but then maybe there's something um you're not sexually completely fulfilled with x y and z or maybe you want to explore something more or maybe you want to have a conversation of something you want to do in the bedroom with your partner that could be one aspect and if that feels like, oh there's something outside the bedroom you haven't said so the more that this is why i'm like how the fuck can i be more it's like it goes back to this concept authenticity again so my authentic here so there's that clear line of communication it seems like you have a beautiful clear line with your partner already then clearer in your heart that's why i'm like when i feel open in my heart connected my oh god i don't feel like there's anything i'm holding back from her and she's not holding back from me and i even the micro things and this is where i'm with this woman now like i got a i got a massage the other day man for example and i I was with my partner. Uh, I was like, I was, I'm in Australia. She's overseas at the moment. And I said to her, I'm like, I got a massage. I got a massage the other day. And then this woman, she was grazing her hands through the inside of my leg. And she kind of touched my, my dick a little bit, like just like when she did that. But, and then she's like, do you want a happy ending? I'm like, no, I don't. But I told my partner all of that because I know if I went to the relationship with her, so just like getting massages completely naked because it feels fucking great. But then, well, I just wanted to tell her like, hey, this woman like kind of touched it when she was in the inside of my leg because I know if I held that back, I'd feel like this micro disconnect from us when we're in that sexual connection, even though I didn't do anything. It's just more like that complete transparency of the conversation, which allows me to even be more rock hard, more deeply connected and feel a, and we can both feel deep pleasure because guys like, oh, what she doesn't know can't hurt her. That is such a fucking retarded thing to say, which I used to say a lot back in the day. I'm definitely not saying, bro, you're, you're, you're in that category at all. Maybe back in the day, like me, you know, when we said we're a bit, a bit, a bit more fucking. Well, it can't, it, it can't hurt, it can't hurt her, but it's going to hurt you, which is going to hurt her. Right. And that's, yeah. it's like on, honesty and the truth. It's like, you know, we connect through the truth. Right. And if you're withholding truth and you know that, you can't really be present in that conversation. Does that mean go and tell her everything that's on your mind? Probably not, right? There's obviously like yeah. a, <laughs> a boundary and a line with this stuff. But like if there's something that you're not saying and it's creating this feeling or this reaction in your body, like that's a really good place to look, I feel like. Because this, I, I, I think, I mean, I know from my own personal experience that stuff used to really cause problems for me until I got comfortable expressing those truths and, you know, having those difficult conversations and 
you know, finding the words to have the conversations or approaching it in the right way. Cause it's like, once you're in your head, you're fucked. Oh, that's it. And big pharma plays into that. That's it. When they realize that Mm -hmm. when they, when they, I forgot what it was, the 19 something, they found that you could, they had the blue pill for Viagra. As soon as they found that Viagra, do you know how much research they put into as soon as they found the re, uh, as soon as they found Viagra, do you know how much research they've done on male fucking sexuality and stuff like that since then, or like improving Viagra? Yeah, my guess is yeah. a lot. <laughs> to do no, no. wait to improve it to like improve the yeah. product. Yeah, yeah improve. Oh, the product. so you're saying none? Interesting, because they're like, oh, we yeah. have a fix and we're good. We have a fix. Why the fuck do we need to change it? We just worked out our business model. So it's all the business model. Yeah, Viagra will, yeah. Business, short-term Viagra will get you hard because like it opens up the blood receptors down there and just like sends a lot of blood. But then I've been on Cialis and I couldn't get it up because I was so psychologically disconnected from that. So they don't talk about the head and heart connection to your genitalia. They just talk about like, here it is. We're going to fucking emit so mm. much blood flow from that area. And then you get dependent on this thing. And then you're actually having unconscious sex. And what I mean by unconscious sex, you're having sex with maybe women who you don't really want to be there. You're not really feeling it or you're not, un- you're not addressing the elephant in the room or you're not, as you are so deeply aware, bro, like looking into what's going on. Maybe it's something I haven't said in the relationship or maybe it's not from the conversation we just had today. Or maybe it's like, I need to talk more about X, Y, and Z. And this is for other men as well. But instead of like going here and coming from the heart, like, you, you know, when you have those conversations where you just feel fucking, you feel like a weight's being lifted off your chest. And you, I don't want to go to, like, it's just simple like that. You feel like that weight, I'm like, oh, fuck, I just feel close to her again. That's where you yeah. should feel. And then you, you have no problems getting an erection. I see that as my barometer. If I'm having a disagreement with my partner and I don't have an erection, as soon as I, I feel like closed off and disconnected, but then I just slow down, connect with her. And then when I feel like, all that tension dissipated because we talked about everything. I just automatically get an erection because I'm like, I want to fuck again. So I see that as the the barometer of like where I'm at with the connection with my partner. And then I'm like, if I'm not getting an erection, I'm like, look, like really fucking pissed. I'm going to be looking away. So, or I'm just not going to be wanting to engage in that. So, <laughs> right. But when we're, well, this is a, yeah. a, I'm sure you could speak to this because this is another kind of interesting experience I had that, that like, I was always curious about. So when I first started having threesomes, right, then it's like the same sexual dysfunction that I had when I was first like trying to, you know, meet more women. Like, so I, I killed the, I killed the premature ejaculation thing with new girls, solved that. Right. And then I had the couldn't get it up problem, but only in threesomes and group sex situations. Right. So it's like, I did all this work to create the threesome. Right. And then it's like, well, shit, now my junk's not going to work. This is fucking great. Right. So then I, the way I kind of, I mean, I, I slowly overcame that by just like taking the pressure off. Cause I, I was able to do it more often. So it, it became less of a problem, but I realized that if I just had some Viagra on me, like I wouldn't even have to take it. If I just knew I had it, then it wouldn't yeah. be an issue. But if I didn't have it, then, <laughs> then I'd be in trouble. So it's like the link in my brain was fucking crazy. So it's like, <laughs> you know, like the placebo effect, I don't know what you want to call it, but like yeah. that, like there, there's obviously like such a powerful, you know, brain dick connection there. It's like, I didn't even have to take the fucking pill. It just having it was like, okay, that's I'm good a, now. That's such a good <laughs> so point. What do you make of that? I completely agree. It's it's psychological, mm-hmm. man. It's most of the time it's psychological and emotional. And like, if you told me right now to go to a sex party and fuck a woman in front of guys, I'm like, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't get it up. I just don't want, like, I just don't want to do it. If you really psychologically don't want to do it, it's not going to happen. Or if you really, 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 really want to do it, it's the same effect because you're in fucking fight or flight. It's the right. exact same. So guys, like most guys at sex parties are taking Viagra or they're taking shit to, to get it up, dude. That's the thing. That's I mean, porn stars line. are getting injected constantly. Yeah, you, get, you know, I've, you I've, I've interviewed inject- multiple porn stars and yeah. like they've all like, well, ex- except for Timo Hardy. Um, he was like, I mean, I've, I've gotten to sex parties with him. He's just like a, a freak of nature, but, um, you know, the other guys like they're, they're like, 
yeah, I mean, they, I mean, it's their job. So they have to be able to essentially come on command in a lot of the stuff, but they, they're, they're saying, you know, guys are constantly like injecting themselves with the stuff to keep them hard. And, you know, cause they're in these scenes for hours and hours and hours. So it's like what you're seeing on porn isn't real. It's like, this isn't like normal shit. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, man. Like I haven't been in the porn industry and I don't plan to anytime soon at all. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a good that's way to run to sex. Yeah. I, I mean, just, I, I, yeah, I don't want him, bro. It's like, I don't, like people are like, why don't you do some porn or like do an OnlyFans account? I'm like, it's just not my vibe. I just like, I'm not that, I'm not that guy. I just want to give relatable, concise sexuality advice. I don't want you to see me fucking a woman on camera. I'm like, I don't need to do that. I know, I know a guy who actually runs a company and all he does is make women squirt. He uploads it all to YouTube. No, no, sorry. You know, um, he, um, porn, porn sites, makes a woman squirt and that's his whole business model. <laughs> it's fucking, it's hilarious. The stuff you see in this world. But yeah, I just know with the erection stuff, well, I'm just, it's all connected, man. It is all connected to your heart and all to your mind. And yeah, for sure, if you have the placebo, I'm like, I've got it there just in case I need it. So then you've got that confidence as well. And I, mate, I wouldn't be able to get it up. Like if I was at a sex party right now, you're like, go oh, fuck this. Like, I just don't, the thing is, I know deep down, I don't want to be there. But when I was nervous back in the day, like sometimes I wouldn't be able to get it up either because I'm like, I felt like I had to. A lot of the times I wouldn't even have sex at sex parties. I'd just be playing around with other women, making them squirt, doing things and backing women up on double enders or seeing other women fuck each other with strap-ons, et cetera, like that. I'm like, that that stuff doesn't interest me too much at the moment. But I'm with what you're saying, I've actually got this really great woman and we're going to be connecting and be looking for a third to join our connection. I don't want to have like tons and tons of threesomes with her. I'm like, I'm not down for that. I actually just want to find a really one cool woman and dive deep and have a in-depth a deep emotional connection with her and go on fucking cool adventures. That's what I'm aiming for. And we've discussed that together and we're both on the same page. And I think the thing about threesomes when guys are in this position, I've been there before, like they go, oh, I'm having a threesome. I can't wait to do this. But if a woman feels that thirstiness and they feel like you're just doing it for you, it needs to be about her and she needs to be fucking into it. If not, she, it will fuck up the dynamic or you'll be in the dynamic and she'll be like pulling back and she'll be like, I don't really want to be here or after it, she's just going to be like, oh, I feel really uncomfortable and it was, it was kind of crap. And then, but then she did it for you. Like never be in a connection with a woman where she's doing it just for you to please you. It's just going to end sideways. And yeah, let's not dive into that, but that could be a huge fucking topic about like how many men actually, I'm having a threesome and I'm doing it just, it's just all about me. It's like, dude. right. Yeah. I mean, it's like one of those things that like, at least for me, I remember I had that on my bucket list for so long and like, finally I was in Vegas. I was with my girlfriend. I think I was 27, 28 years old. And mm -hmm. we met this other girl at Dre's, you know, after hours nightclub. And she literally like came up to us and like, she approached us in the bar and within the first like 15, 20 seconds of the conversation, she goes, she's like, so what are you guys thinking tonight? Like threesome. And we're both like, we had already discussed that we wanted to have one. Right. So we're both like, yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> and then we ended up like losing her in the club for some times. So we're both trying to find her. And then we finally find her. And then we got to go back to the Bellagio, which is like, you know, probably like a 20 minute walk down the strip. Um, from, well, no, it's not too bad, but it's like across the street from Dre's, but you have to kind of go through these tunnels. It's Vegas. Right. So like, and while we're walking back, I swear I get cock blocked by like five or six different dudes. Cause I'm like with two cute girls and like, you know, it's five or six in the morning and like everyone's drunk and like <laughs> this guy's pulling her away. And then I got to get that. And this guy's pulling her away. And then finally, <laughs> finally I get them both back upstairs <laughs> and I was awkward as fuck and like, you know, overly excited. And then, you know, I had issues. I couldn't get it up. And then eventually I did, but it was like, you know, I, I, mm. I finally crossed it off the, off the list, but I was so in my head about it just because I was, you know, fantasizing about that moment for so long that, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I, you know, I've talked to guys about having a similar experience or, you know, I, the parties I used to throw, like, you know, sometimes like crazy shit would go down, but then the guy would like, the poor guy would be sitting there and like, this is not working for him. So I'd have to like go and be like, dude, like, okay, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Have you tried, you know, like coaching, trying to coach yeah. him through it. And it's always just, you know, it's happening between the ears and, um, it is. you know, it's like, yeah, the, tough situations, but, uh, very fast. The worst part, the worst part is when it's not up and come on, buddy. 
But right. then, like, it's, it's, it's then you're in that self, it's then you're in that happen. fucking cycle. So, right. yeah, I, I hear, man. And, like, I love this. I love the conversation we've had today because it's just what most people are not talking about. And, man, how vulnerable you went about your own personal situation as well. Like, fucking respect, dude. But I know that's just how you roll anyway. And Well, you went first, man. I, I, I appreciate it. I think this, uh, you know, I'm sure people watching are like, all right, these guys are not afraid to, <laughs> to talk about what's going on. And it's like, well... I know someone's going to be watching this and like, what are they going to do? They're going to be like, oh, Robbie has this problem. No one gives a fuck about me. Like no one cares. They got their own shit to deal with, right? Or it's like, oh my God, Andrew has herpes. Like who gives a shit, right? If people are so worried about what other people are thinking, it's like no one gives a fuck. They're just worried the about themselves. Are, man. The chances you know? are the people who are um, acting like that need this message the most anyway, or they'll probably have that in the future for themselves anyway. So totally. And and I hope, and I hope, I really hope that everyone, like the reason we have an SQL, like to elevate the sexual well-being of humanity. So men can have those experiences that they've always wanted and have the experiences with women because sex is so beautiful, so playful, so fun, so enjoyable. So like, goodness me. And like, that's why like I'm on that journey of like looking for a woman with my partner to have that. That's where I'm at. That's why I subjectively want. Maybe in two years, I'll be like, hey, Robbie, I'm looking for to get married or I just don't know. All I know, this is where I'm at right now. And, and by me sharing like authenticity of like, that's where I'm at with my sexual journey. That's where I'm at with all the stuff across the board. I have no problems because I think guys just think you, know, you have to be this man in the bedroom and you always rock hard or you never have any problems or you just fuck like an absolute thing. Like how many guys, man, I talk to on a daily basis. Can't get it up. Coming too quickly. Get walked over by their partner. There's no sexual polarity. They just feel disconnected from their whole relationship. They feel like they're suffering in silence. There's no one to talk to. They're having fucking terrible sex and they just think that's like that for the rest of their life. They make all this money in their business, but then they neglect their fucking woman and she cheats. Like it's just endless. It's fucking endless. And for us having this conversation, it brings awareness to actually the truth behind the fucking eight ball opposed to trying to hide behind it, which so many men do. And if you're hiding behind this and you're feeling fucked up and you're not broken, you're not alone. You're definitely not alone in it. It breaks my heart to see how many men don't have the support unit to someone to reach out to, to really dive into this and feel like, oh, someone's got my back. So I hope even just from today that they felt a little bit more connected and not so alone or not so like, that they're, yeah, that they're this one in a billion fucking person. No, no. All the stuff I said You're not a today special is, snowflake. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not at all, man. So if if you are that guy listening, like, how how can a guy, like, you know, get help from you? Um, where can people find your stuff? Because like, I, 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 your message is so valuable and so important, and you really are like creating such a difference on this planet by healing these deep, you know, this, this is trauma. Like if you, if you're carrying around this like sexual trauma, like your life is going to be significantly worse versus Mm -hmm. when you can get past this stuff. Like the, uh, the amount of like just how much better life can be, it's fucking night or day. So like, dude, your message is so valuable. So how how can guys find you? What, you know, what, what can they do to, you know, to handle these things? I recommend this. Go check out Sexual Quantum Leap YouTube channel. And if you connect with that, man, then there's so many different things that you can go. And we've got so many free things that they can look into. So go check the channel. That's it. Sexual Quantum Leap. Enjoy, explore, and go from there. And all I want you to do is this. This is let's do this for you. Your sexual education and becoming that man you've always wanted to be. Like do this for you and just take that time and don't let anyone else tell you this is how you should do or how you should act. Like be you, do you, have those conversations that you you're say the things that are hard to say and ask the questions that are hard to fucking ask and you watch how much so many things will change inside and outside the bedroom for you. Love it, brother. Dude, it's been so amazing. Really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's, you know, hopefully been very valuable to to you guys listening. So thanks so much for coming on and sharing all your wisdom, brother. Hey, I thank you so much for the opportunity. It's always a pleasure, bro. 
I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you're new to the show and digging our content, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you listen or watch. But if you're not really digging it, go ahead, just don't leave us any review at all. That'd be great. If you're feeling a little bit stuck or you just want to optimize and step up your game, we've opened up a few spots in our Inner Confidence community. We're accepting applications if you want to join our select group of men and experience the radical power of accountability, cross everything off your sexual bucket list, and just become a beast who gets more stuff done. To learn more and apply, go to start.innerconfidence.com. 